Welcome to Black Republican, Black Democrat. I'm your co-host, Jamar Nelson. I'm your other co-host, A.K. Kamar. The Democrat. I'm the smart one. I'm the Republican. The wrong one. The smarter one. The wrong one. I I, I, I love how things went. Especially when it doesn't get butchered. Yeah, no, this is, it's got these deep, funky, you know, got that bass slap. I think I wrote this. In my dreams. Hey, man, I, I I started playing bass guitar when I was like 12 years old. Yeah, you were telling me about your uh, uh, your white experience. Yeah, my my uh, my younger days, I was I was big into grunge. Um, you know, I was I was big into rock music. And then when I was 14, uh, this kid moved into town, Kenny Troy, and he introduced me to hip hop. Thank and you. Wait, what can? Thank you, Kenny, Kenny Troy. Troy. Kenny Troy. Okay, I, although your name sounds like a damn country and western singer, <laughs> but thank you for. Introducing, reintroducing him back to his blackness. <laughs> Goodness uh, gracious! How was your week, man? What's going on, bro? How, how, well, you know what? So far, so good. Uh, well, you know, I've been dealing with uh, things that's been going on in the city. Yep. Um, well, the other day, the the murder rate is continuously going up. Mm-hmm. We're at we're at about forty nine murders to date, and uh, uh, there was a young man that was uh, well. I, I call her my niece because her, her mom is my best friend. Nephew. And, uh, oh, your no, niece. No, oh, okay, I call yeah, her yeah. But their, Her cousin was killed the other day, uh, yesterday, in fact. Uh, he was intentionally hit and drugged down the street. Wow. And uh, I should have given the producer a picture so we could have put the young man's picture up. Um, the, the city is just full of so much trauma right now. Yeah. And um, we have not started healing yet. We have not. I don't. You can't. The moment you do, you hear there's a gunshot. Uh, a child is shot, literally. A child yeah, is shot. That. Baby, not child, because you have to preference that. This, uh, a, a baby shot. Another young man last week when we neglected to mention, another three-year-old child was shot last week. Uh, shot in the leg, broke his femur. Um, he Obviously, he's, well, I will not say obviously, but he is expected to make it. Uh, but can you imagine how traumatized that baby is? Yeah. Or will be. Right. You know, um, it's crazy, AK, man, just um, the turmoil our city is in. And and, and, and I'm not going to be political because when we have political folks on the show, they like to blame, especially depending on the party, they like to blame each other. And I say shut up. It's time to stop blaming each other and for us to sit down at a table like this or bigger and come up with some damn solutions. Right. Right. There's no... One size for all. There's no, uh, my solution is best. Let's hear these eclectic ideals and try to implement some of them. Yeah. Because it, things are not getting better. Right. And if we continue to, form, what's the marriage for? If I, but as I keep asking those, those guests that say that is, well, what would you do as the mayor? See, it's easy to say what you would do to you sit in that chair. Sure. And you get those phone calls from uh, the National Guard saying, hey, your city is on fire, literally. We can quarrel it, but we're, you want us to go down there and quarrel, I don't know, at this 2,000 people. How do you do that without her? And then here's the other thing. Some of those people are being violent. Right. So they're throwing things at the, 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 the police, at the servicemen and women that come in that area. So they're supposed to protect themselves. So now you have an even bigger incident, this was, which I was saying to these political figures that come here, AKs. That only makes the problem bigger. Because now I wouldn't want to be the mayor. I wouldn't want to be the governor that has 10, 12 murders of civilians on my hand because they were rioting. Sure. I would not want to be that mayor, especially the mayor. I would not want to be the mayor knowing that I gave the okay to have National Guard come in and then they killed. Some people ended up dead. I'm going to say they killed, but, you know. So, bro, it's, it's, it, 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 um, it's crazy. And I don't know. Again, I, I don't I don't pretend to have the right ideals, but I love meeting with people, being with people that are bold enough to come up with ideas, bro, to voice ideals. Again, there's no right idea. Well, I, I don't want to say there's no right idea. There's a, let's let's come up with some good ideals. Sure. To make a right idea. You know, the thing when you when you kind of look at what this experiment has been of of humanity, right? You got All these different groups that come together, they try and figure out what's working, what's not working. And I think that America has set up this framework that says that cities, states, counties, they can create these like little experiments and figure out what works. And I think that the 
the best thing about American history in figuring out how we've solved some of these problems is it takes folks coming together and saying, let's try this and see what works. And I think if we can kind of shift the way that we look at things, not just through the lens of is this Republican or is this Democrat, but you look at solutions and you say, is this a solution that we've tried? Has it has it worked? Has it not worked? You build upon that because at the end of the day, when, when you think about what politics is, it's a, a mechanism that we can say I can – kind of blindly say this person believes in this and this person believes in this. But when it actually comes down to making things work, doing the job of what a government is, right? It should be providing protection for people and things like that. You have to be able to look beyond that. And I, and I think that the hardest thing in, in our current environment with how polarized we've become is that good ideas get thrown out because they come from this party or you know whatever it might be, or, or they get shut down right away. Um, and I, I think that that's um, a problem, and it's going to take people that have political courage that can stand up and say, this this idea is something we should try and, and push it. And it, to me, always comes back the community. The mm. community has to be able to stand up and stand with. And I, and I think people are at that point where – you know, you've seen teachers come out, you know, you saw this kind of uh, late in, in spring teachers coming out saying, like, we, we don't care about the politics. We care that our children are dying. Right. And so we need to look at what are some solutions? What are some things that we haven't thought about? And that's that's what it takes. And it's going to continue to take that without that the politicians won't have the political will to do anything. And so to me, you got to put all options on the table. And like you said, you, you got to be able to come together and figure out something because. Whatever is happening is not working, and you have to be able to to move forward. So that's, that's the only option there is, man. Yeah, I mean, stop blaming each other. Let's mm-hmm. let's, 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 let's seriously get to work, damn it, because people's lives are really at stake, whether it's uh, their risk of crime in their neighborhoods or financially what's going on with them. We have to work out both these worlds. we gotta, we got to walk and chew gum. Sure. And I think sometimes politicians don't know how to do that, I you know, know, or refuse to do that, right? Yeah. And so that's the hamperment of of why we're not progressing because of politicians. Yeah. Not a Democrat, not just Republican, of politicians. Because he is, his or her, Democrat or Republican, loves their own little, uh, the pork that they put in whatever bill so that that bill doesn't go and things of that nature. Now, do I really believe Republicans are being obstruction, obstructionists? Absolutely. I absolutely do. Mitch McConnell, Mr. Magoo, <laughs> uh, has pissed me off from the beginning when, it, when, when President Obama was in office, when he said that he made it his business to make him a one-term president. And I think, you know, I've shared with you that I don't root for any president to fail because when that president fails... We fail as a country. I'm an American. I would never root for a president to fail. I didn't root for Trump to fail. I couldn't stand the guy because I thought he was a bombastic bastard. But I didn't root for him to fail because his failure is failure. Especially it imminently affects poor people, yeah. black and brown folks. When a president, when this country fails, we get the worst of those brunts. Mm-hmm. Not the folks with the with the $100,000 salaries or $75,000 salaries, right? They don't get. They don't hurt too much. Now, I'm not saying that they don't, but they don't hurt too much. It's us with the with the thirty thousand dollars or less incomes. Sure. So you know, which is why we make it a gallant effort or gallant effort. <laughs> um, you know my British accent. <laughs> um, to bring in good guests on this show, which you know I've made that my business for the last five years, and uh, tonight's guest is one of the reasons that. Uh, we're talking about any of this, the, the subjects because, you know, we're both political wonks, right? Yeah. And, uh, which is, I, I'm sure, does your, does your wife, well, I was going to say do like mine, but I, I'm divorced. <laughs> but uh, does your wife do the same thing mine used to is when you turn, when you sit down, she knows to go into the other room because you're going to watch politics or yeah, something. Yeah, so yeah. My, my wife hates politics. I mean, <laughs> like when, when we first got together, I wasn't into politics at all. It wasn't, it wasn't kind of in my space at all. And then uh, when I started going to college and I started getting into stuff, she was like, whatever. And it, it's it's funny because, like, there was this running joke because, you know, I, I would go out to everything. Like, I, you know, when I was in college and at, right after college and even even now, um, yeah, I, I go to events all the time. I always try to get out there and, and meet with activists and, and be active and involved. And the joke was, you're not really married. I never seen your wife. 
because <laughs> Tommy, I, because you know, I, I would be out and about, and it's just not not her thing. It's, it's not that I didn't want her to come. It's just Me too. it's not her thing. My wife know? didn't and, enjoy it either, and I think she's actually became a little bit more. But um, then she met me, so now she's really involved. Yeah, but now that guy. It, now she's become more involved in it, and and you know, at least from the perspective of like watching and asking questions about stuff. But yeah, no, for for the most part, man, my wife, that's just that's not her thing. But that's it's a little bit different for our guests. Bethany, thank you. Okay, I I, I hope we're still friends because I I love you too. Okay, <laughs> I love you. Uh, and 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 when he gets home, he's gonna tell you what I've made a gallant effort to not say. On the air, okay? He's going to tell you <laughs> your favorite saying. He's going to tell you. I've been I'm making a good effort to not do that. Um, one thing about uh, being married to me or being in a commitment with me is you're going to do two things. You're going to have to be a Democrat <laughs> and a Cowboys fan. That's it. That's it. You got to live with So our house is a... But I'm meant to be a Democrat and a Cowboys fan. I mean, when you're... when you're Well, I mean, I'm older than dirt now. What? But when I was a kid, when boys were born in the hospital... They would put a football in their hands, so you would take the you oh, know the really? baby picture with that football. So well, okay. You, so mine's not like this. Mine's is in this motion. Oh, you QB, <laughs> yes. I'm in this motion, right? You know, uh, I think I was going to be uh, uh, Steve McNair before he knew it. <laughs> That's right. So seriously, our great guest tonight is uh, um, Isaac Russell, who is a LA. Well, you know, see, they also go with the political talk. Who is a legislative assistant yep. uh, for the minority leader uh, there in the Senate and um, here in uh, Minnesota. Here and uh, wanted Isaac. First of all, welcome to the show, Isaac. You're welcome, man. Uh, welcome. Thanks for having me. No, absolutely. It's our pleasure, bro. As you were hearing us uh, talk to and allude to some of the things political, uh, you have a, a a good job, but a job that uh, is in the thick of everything. You know, you you see the sausage being made a lot. And I remember I applied for L.A. for uh, John Thompson, yeah. and uh, those bastards didn't hire me. But um, <laughs> um, I enjoyed the process, though. You know, I it was pretty big getting interviewed by some of the um, house reps and things. Yeah, it was like. Yeah. Oh, Sure. You know, saying that you know that guy. And um, that's a good job to have because, see, for especially for someone like me, I wanted to rub elbows with those different individuals who I thought I could make a difference for um, the person I was. Cl- well, it's not clerking. You don't say clerking. Uh, L.A. Being for, there in L.A. for. for. Yeah, okay, working, working for. for that's right. Working for. And I thought that I could make a difference because if I could work for uh, J.T., I could help him. Um, build those bridges with other people that did, didn't like him because right. I might know them. And yeah, although most Republicans hate me too. Definitely should have, they should have hired me. They should have hired me. Yeah. I would have said we wouldn't be going through any of this. Probably we wouldn't not. be going through any Probably of this. Not. And which, seriously, I brought up that point too and it's, and it's uncanny that you're here. Uh, is because in the position that right now that John's going through uh, right now, uh, today he was convicted of uh, disorderly conduct in the case uh, that he was going through, the trial he was going through uh, 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 against the North Memorial. Um. Uh, candidly, I, 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 I flat out told him I thought that once these allegations got out of bottom, that he was going to get convicted. He was uh the the jurors of his peers were not that they were a uh, jury of all white women. There's and one black woman. Where? In the jury. It, when? His ju- his jury had one black woman. When she must have been an alternate of the six, nope. She yeah. was an actual juror, an actual juror, one black woman. Oh, she was hiding then. <laughs> she was hiding. Okay, so, but you had to know that all women, women, he probably didn't stand a chance of not being of 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 being exonerated from a disorderly conduct. Media has a way of you know persuading jurors, especially when you're not sequestered. You clerk, you work for the minority leader. Oh, bless your heart, too, by the way. <laughs> bless your heart. Um, wh- when you see the sausage being made, how does it? How does it feel when? Do you rub elbows like what I wanted to do? Is your job as important as I think it is to help your uh, boss or whom? I don't know what the. F- freak we're gonna call these people your boss um passed this particular piece of legislation that he or she wants to uh get passed what's your role what do you do 
Well, first off, I want to let's make this clear. I'm not here as a spokesperson for absolutely uh, yeah, for Senator Kent's office. Um, but with that being said, uh, it, it really depends upon the office, right? So, some members have their legislative assistants much more involved in the legislation that they're pushing. Uh, it really just depends upon the idiosyncrasies. However, um, you know, I can speak for the the legislative assistants in the Senate. Absolutely, very involved in the process, right? So. It goes all the way from making sure that you have the hearing request in, that you have their their speakers organized and on the schedule. Oftentimes, you're meeting either with like um, you know uh, industry experts on whatever particular issue. I've met with industry experts separate. You know, I've worked for three members since I've been there. I've been there since 2013. What's out now? Okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I've been there for a little while. Three members, and it's it's been an interesting ride. Yeah, I'm sure. Really. And it, so you work for both. <laughs> you work for both parties. No, it's very rarely do you get someone that works for both parties. Oh, really? Yeah. Very so if rarely. you're if you if you're an LA for whatever Republican minority leader, this is that's it. Yeah, you're going for the Democrats. You work for the Democrats, okay. right? And it's in part because um, you know a lot of this is based on trust, okay? Right. And so someone was working for, let's say, a Democrat wants to go to Republicans. Um, and which, by the way, we've had Senator Bach, Senator Tomasoni, they've left the caucus, but they are not in the Republican Party. <laughs> Judas! Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, go um, <laughs> anyways, um, but uh, you you would be, if let's say you decided to make that jump, right? And we've had that happen in the past, yeah. right? Yeah. There's a strong chance that a lot of people in the caucus that you left will have some very strong feelings of dislike towards you. And there's a very good possibility that the people in the caucus that you go to will have a uh, very strong distrust of you. Mm. Right. And, and that's just the nature of the game. And, and as you were mentioning, uh, uh, it's gotten more partisan. So because it's gotten more partisan, you're absolutely seeing people dig in. Right? Oh, yes. Um, and when you see that partisan that, that, that partisan setup and it begins to pull people like this, it gets harder to find that center ground, that middle ground in which quite frankly is, is, is where deals get made. Right. right yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And what happens is, is that each side is, is, is pulling, right. Because they want to make that deal, but they want to make that deal, you know, better on their own terms. Oh yeah. Right? So and they I'm, can be I'm, the ones to take the, take the, uh, the victory wrong. Right. Well, I mean, the thing is the, the best deal is a deal where you come out and you say, all right, well, uh, we didn't get everything we want, but as a former Senator, I used to work for a said you got half a, half a loaf right and that's better than not eating that's better than hello that's real right in, in being there since 2013 that's what i'm saying so you've definitely seen the partisan divide you've seen the yeah. the 360 degree not just a little bit you've seen a whole 360 degree turn and divide because in this country that's what happened and so i won't blame it all on trump but i'll say the I mean, he did a lot of fan in the flames no, of this it. Precedes, this precedes Trump. The part no, no, absolutely, absolutely it does. Absolutely. I mean, I think to me, honestly, I think it 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 started at the end of Bush because there were a lot of uh, minority folks that didn't think that he cared, and then President Obama came in. President Obama came in, and obviously that dislike. I I I, I don't know if I, I'm sure I never told you there was a um, a documentary that. Uh, Allison Pelosi put out Nancy's daughter mm -hmm. and uh, it was a uh, uh, done by HBO she went around the country interviewing white individuals about President Obama and I absolutely loved it because there were people that I didn't think they were all racist I thought that they have prejudices but they were being truthful with the fact saying that listen I'm not ready I'm not ready for a black president I don't I just I'm just not ready for the black guy I ain't ready for him. Or that woman Hillary either. I wouldn't want it her neither. I just want a white president. I mean. Hey, by the way, your your your, your southern accent. You like much, I, more, I, it's I, much more important than <laughs> English accent. Well, I'm from Dallas, right? But I, I thought that that I wasn't up, upset at that. I thought that that was cool to hear that. So again, I bring that to the part of the partisan divide in this country now. Where Isaac, nothing gets done anymore because everyone, like you, you said, that the, you hit the nail on the head. Everyone digs in and nothing gets done does the at, at that point does an la or like for instance let's say you're 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 la in for me i will go and yeah. put an ing on that uh -huh. LA. and uh I, uh my bill is uh I, I don't know uh public safety it's public safety and uh i'm pushing this bill but he's got this big piece of pork that he wants to put it in now we're both dug in you're la in for me is it your job or do I send you to his office to meet with some people to talk about 
uh, what I want and what he wants. How crucial does the L.A. play a role in to getting anything done? So um, as far as as far as uh, what you would call pork, we, that usually just doesn't get dropped into public safety bills. Um, you know, it's again, it's, it's really contingent upon the office. But at the same time, uh, you know, people want to work with people that they're able to form some sort of relationship with. Right. And that's important. You know, that's been one of the negative consequences of not being in the building, right? We had to, we were dealing with COVID. Right. Mm-hmm. Those who can't sacrifice should. We were one of the people that, okay, you can get up and you can not work in the building. Uh, it's different than a business owner, right? That business Correct. owner is going to pay a much stiffer price. And, you know, their sacrifice is not born equal by all people, right? That business owner has a greater sacrifice. Correct. So we left the building. But the problem is with that. You have a five minute conversation on your way back from committee, something like that, something that allows you to get some face time right on a particular issue. And you could be giving them some sort of information that could make a difference later on down the road. More to the point, when it comes to forming that relationship, you're spending a long day on the Senate floor. Right. You get up, you go in back to the retirement room and you just go back there and you, you just start talking and going back and forth with someone that you wouldn't normally talk to. And then you find out, oh, hey, you know, we got some things in common. You know, uh, we get along. You know, I, I, I have uh, I have friends that, you know, I've talked to as we politically when we start talking, we disagree on a lot of stuff. But we have a whole lot of other things that makes us because we're we're much deeper than just our political, you know, affiliations. I know um, I am for sure. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. I mean, you yeah, yeah. make that connection, right? Yeah. Right, right. yeah. I mean, absolutely. And, and like, uh, you know, yeah. Bobby, our, our yeah. mutual friend, a mutual friend. Hmm? Yeah. You know, um, you know, Bobby and I, we disagree about a lot of things. Um, I know where Bobby's coming from, a sincere and honest place. That's right. You know, and I trust him in that, right? But we have a whole bunch of other things that we like to talk about. Do you meet with that a particular senator or are you meeting with their other L.A.s? That's what I'm saying. Who are you dealing with? So, so sometimes um, I'm just like, hey, uh, my senator needs to talk to your senator about such and such, mm-hmm. you know, and they could be like, well, my senator, you know, this is kind of an issue. I'm like, well, yeah, we know that we're working on that, but we're trying to get a meeting. Let's say if it's public safety, we want to get get a meeting, you know, with the peace officers, we get a meeting with the police chiefs, we get a meeting with the county attorneys, we get a meeting with the League of Cities, you know, whoever whoever it may be required to advance that bill. And any lobbyist, any advocate, and this goes out for for anyone who 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 may be listening and wants to lobby, you're smart if you get along with the staff. Right. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. Because you control that schedule, and it's like, oh, oh yeah, that's so right. Look, you can't get control on that schedule. schedule right? Yeah. So, uh, you sent in that email. <laughs> you know, it got buried. You, you understand all the constituent work I'm getting. You know the thing. The thing that um, you know, the reason you know that I want to have you on Isaac. So I've known Isaac uh, for a few years. Um, we have a mutual friend, uh, our buddy Bobby, and um, Bobby and me know each other through Republican politics, right? And You're Republican. Yeah, oh. and so uh, what, like I, I went to college with this dude Bobby, and we became really good buddies. And um, you know, he, he'd always tell me he grew up in Hugo. He'd always tell me about these buddies that he hung out with, and you know, we talked about like so like what do your buddies think about politics and stuff? He's like, well, my one buddy is a Democrat, and I'm like, like, but you're like an active Republican. He's like, yeah, now this dude's like he's my homeboy, homeboy. And so I met Isaac and. And he's like, yeah, this this dude's a DFLer. And I'm like, what? I'm like, that's so crazy. And to me, that was eye opening because I was new into politics and relatively new. You know, I, I didn't I didn't grow up like my parents didn't campaign or anything like that. And and all I had known really was Republican politics, like just from a political perspective. Yeah. And so like you kind of grow that animosity towards Bless Democrats and everything like Bless that. And so that that was Poor kind you. of that was a cool thing for me. And then, you know, it just helped me understand like of I can stand by the beliefs that I have, but you just said something that I think is, is key. And I know a lot of people don't like to hear this, especially in the, the era that we're in now where we're so politically divided. But you understand that even if someone disagrees with you politically, if you know that they are coming from a place of good intention and you can at least have the understanding, that helps with the conversation. And I think that that's the problem that we have. I'm not trying to be but you know, all, all gushy and say like, oh, kumbaya. Or no, no. Like that. But, but for me, you know, I think that you, especially in your position, you have a unique perspective that you've been able to kind of understand how important that is. Because like we said at the beginning, right, put politics aside and say you got stuff to get done and, and you as an L.A., 
you know, you are working on behalf of, of yes, your elected rep, but for the people, for what's the constituents, the, you know. But mm-hmm. what's the road to hell paved with? It's good intentions. Okay, right? okay. <laughs> well, it, it, it's paved with, with good intentions, but so the thing is, and the devil's in the details, right? Absolutely. It, but, um, <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> you know, the, the thing is, uh, you know, about my background is living in a, a lot of different places when I was, uh, when I when I was younger, right, and a lot of it was housing insecurity. Um, you know, we we were on all sorts of government assistance, welfare, Section Eight. You go to Goodwill, eat, uh, you know, eat at the Dorothy Day, things like that, right. So you get one side of life, yep, right. But then you get the other side of life, and so then that's my 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 mother's family side of the family, right. And so the stories that they tell in their family is different than the other stories, right. Well, so wait, let's 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 kind of bring this back. Are you biracial? Yeah. Okay. So your mom is my mom's white and, and native. She's a member of the Ottawa Native Tribe in Michigan. Okay. Watch out now. You're getting some of that uh, mystic money. And uh uh <laughs> you <laughs> bro. <laughs> and your pops is is black. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 I'm sorry. I just wanted to bring folks cuz when you're yeah. talking about the different experiences, I immediately got yep. the fact. Okay, I'm sorry. Yep. No, no, that's no problem. But the stories are tell different, right? So he was radio DJ. He worked at KDWB when he came from Michigan. Who did? My grandfather. I mean, this is a long ago because KDWB. Your white granddad. Out. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I never met my, my my father's father. Okay. But my mother's father, uh, yes. But, you know, this is when they, they first came over. And the story is like, oh, uh, here's, I, I brought in Stevie when he was 13 to play taps on a radio in Michigan. Like, those are the stories, right? Really? Crazy. So, so the, the thing is, is that you get that sort of exposure. But yes. The background that he was from. Like, and he, he was an FDR, died in the wool Democrat, right? But he worked in business. He's around a lot of Republicans, right? Mm-hmm. So I had time in the inner city. I had time in the suburbs. I had, you know, first, second, third ring suburbs, time in Phoenix. You go up around a lot of different people mm. and you begin to understand that even if you have that difference with them, there is a different level that you can connect and you can't always assume malicious intent right away. Although there are those malicious oh, actors yeah, yeah. out there, of course, you know yeah. only Republicans. But <laughs> yeah. but, but you, you, you learn to pick up. Says that the guy who's uh, you know getting what? calls to resign. Man, what you talk about? What? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so, but I mean, it's it's you don't assume those malicious in, that malicious intent right away. The problem is, is I think in today's politics, is that that's assumed right immediately. Right immediately, um, but. On the one hand, it's easy to blame the politicians. But there's an issue that society at large is also responsible for this. Which goes right back to the politicians. Well, here's the thing, though. Now, everyone gets mad at politicians because, like, oh, you just... Rightfully get, so. But you just trying to get a vote. This is a representative democracy. I should be trying to earn your vote. So I'm going to try to do what my constituents want. But if you're a constituent, let's say my senator, Senator Ken Woodbury is where she represents. She represents 80,000 people there, right? So that's her job to be responsive to those constituents. Whereas Paul Gazelka, he's up in Niswa, his job is to respond to those constituents. Those constituents are asking for something different. Absolutely, yes, no doubt. So the thing is, people are responsive to the incentives in the system. Hmm. So when people are like, man, these politicians are just deadlock. Like that's because in part you reward them for that. You, mm. you want them to go there and to fight on your behalf and to not compromise and not give an inch because to do so you think is to give in to another, the other side that is immoral for whatever reason you want to say, or just blanket wrong on every issue. And you reward those who go down there and wield that sword of your righteous truth against the enemy. So in part, there is the there is the large society at whole that is responsible because they help produce the the incentives in the system in a representative democracy. Bruh, you know what? Honestly, Isaac, that 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 bruh, you just put me on. Uh, <laughs> really, I had never heard it, you know, stated like that because that's the truth. You know, you, you don't think about it like that because you're so busy. We're so pissed off at even the ones we elected, but <laughs> you're right. I, you do send him or her there to go fight tooth and nail. Because remember, when I campaign, that's what I said. I'll fight for you. So we're sending that guy or gal to go fight for our, us in this particular issue. Right. And you're right. We do incentivize that. So we, okay. Oh, no, I just, that's beautiful to, to, to hear it put like that. I, I still think that, though, it 
So you're in the, and that's what I'm saying. That's why I would love to be in LA because I mean, for real, I mean that you see the sausage get made seriously. Right. You play a pivotal part of the sausage being made because you know, like you're saying, you're making sure you, your senator is on this particular uh, person's uh, schedule, who might be important to help him or her further their uh, legislative piece. Um, but at the same time, when you have and let's keep it real. When you have Republicans or, or the party that's not in charge uh, being bombastic and purposefully poking the bear, that's not inc- that's not incentivizing. That's them playing politics and oftentimes playing politics with the lives of the constituents, some of them, their own, excuse me, and then the ones that they don't care about. So that's what makes us so infuriated with political figures because – Yes, as you just said, that's great. And now I'll be stealing that now. <laughs> that you do send that guy or girl there to uh, to fight for you, but bro, it, I think they sometimes lose their luster because of the money that they see coming in from the lobbyists that uh, that might promise a, 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 a quick pro quo or something like that. Whatever it is, bro, it's it's greed in politics now. Well, here, here's the thing, though. Is that everything costs money, right? Uh, Yeah. So in a system in which things cost money, airtime costs money, marketing costs money, be able to reach the voters costs money. Mm -hmm. To to Mm -hmm. to ask people to do that uh, with no money, right? Now there's absolutely efforts that people try to do. You know, they want publicly financed campaigns, things like that, right? And and that is a good conversation to have. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, But also at the same time, uh, back to that point that you're talking about when it comes to. when it comes to, uh, you know, people playing games with other people's lives. So think about it this way. Now, this is, this is just my analysis. I'm not saying what I agree with. Right. But so let's say you have the calls from Minneapolis to abolish the police. Mm-hmm. Right. Which is idiotic, have, by the way. Right, right. No, I'm, I'm not. A, I'm not saying. You no, know, no, no. That's me. Right. The views and the ex- opinions expressed on this show are that of Jamar's, not of Isaac Russell. <laughs> I just cleared you, bro. I appreciate that, but I think it's idiotic too. <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, because you're responsible for the positive and the negative things about your public policy. So, but anyways, so that's what you advance, right? But then the other side, you know, what they may see a, an opportunity to play politics, but there's also incentives in the system. Why is because if you're in a, a, a an area that produces more police officers, right, or their relationship for your constituents with the police is like, I know this officer because this officer is such and such kid right. or my family had a police officer or this one time I didn't have a problem with the police. Um, when I got stopped or I needed something else. Now the problem is, is that people have a hard time looking beyond their own experiences and their experiences are colored by being a man, you know, what car are you driving, your color, things like that, where you're at, the, a, a lot of different things color your experience. But so when those politicians in areas step up and say, well, these people feel that cops are being under attack. And so, yeah, they absolutely people and both sides do this will engage in bombastic rhetoric, defund the police. This is, you know, I've seen some people rhetorically say that this is, you know, a form of genocide against people of color, things like that. Then I see the other side say that this is a complete war on, on law, war on police, blue lives matter. Those are still incentives in the system Mm -hmm. because there's constituents who are sitting there saying, yes, Mm -hmm. absolutely. I'm going to go vote for you. Go fight. So even in situations like this in which people, you know, engage in rhetoric and that rhetoric has consequences, just like public policy has consequences. I pass a law and I think it's going to help you. And I'm, hey, good job. It helped them. You're responsible for those benefits. You're also responsible for the the problems that that produces. Correct. It's the same with the rhetoric. Hey, yeah. you got in the office because you responded to the incentives in the system and you may have pushed that envelope to a place it, further than what the constituents were going with your rhetoric, right? But you're also responsible for the negative side of that. And that goes on both sides. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I wanted to ask a question. Um, so you've, you've been in L.A. when the Senate had, uh, the DFL had the majority. Yes. And you've also obviously been in with, uh, when they were in the minority party. Um, for you... Did you see a lot of strategic change in the way 
that the process kind of worked and you don't have to give me specific examples or anything like that, but did, did you just kind of see, cause I always have this imagination, right? Like if you're the minority party, you're kind of playing at a place where you're trying to dig into the majority so you can flip a couple of seats here and there. So the tactics that you take might be different or maybe my intuition's wrong and that that's not what your experience has been, that it's basically, you know, the same either way. They're just pushing for the things that they want. So, I mean, the strategies, you know, they change, right? So you're supposed to have things built into the system at the federal level and at the state level that allows for the minority to have their voices being heard, right? And the minority, regardless of who's in, in, in charge, right? That minority party will absolutely say that you're doing this thing that violates it, right? And we have our, we have our list of complaints that, you know, we could level at, at the Senate GOP, and I'm sure that they had theirs, right? But... um the strategies absolutely do change, right? When you're in the minority, your job is to make sure that the points of view that you represent, the constituents, constituents that you represent, uh, uh, get heard. So right? voice, right? Yep. And that's floor debate. Those are amendments, um, which is again, uh, you, you let the minority party do that. Right. Right. And sometimes that leads to long discussions on the floor, all sorts of things. But again, that's a necessary part of the process, right? People hate it. It seems procedural. Um, and in many ways it is, but it's it custom, is, exactly, it's yeah, custom yeah. and usage, but you know, that's, that's the thing. Uh, and, but also you, when you're in the minority, look, uh, elections have consequences, right? So it's not your political agenda, your legislative agenda that advances forward. It's the majority party and that's the way it goes. Um, there are some things that you can work with the other party with that you can, you can get advanced. Um, and you know, you've seen those, those happen on both sides, um, during when each side is in the minority, uh, majority. Um, but yeah, when you're in the majority, I'm gonna lie, it's much better. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Cause you're like, cause you know, I, I imagine too, when, when you're in the majority, um, as an LA and you know, let's say that your, your Senator is chairing, um, you know, this committee, it gives a different type of, uh, I guess, incentive to communicate and also gives you more leverage, right? Like it, you, if you know that your senator is chairing this committee and this bill is about to come through there and you have uh, X, Y, and Z groups that want to try and, you know, have a conversation about amendments they want to add or, or their position on things, um, you know, that, that definitely changes the game because well, you, you yeah. get the swagger, right? Well, like, well, you're the chair, right? You're yeah, the chair. So yeah. all these bills come to you, to, to, to your committee. And you can literally, well, I don't want to hear that one, don't want to hear that one, don't want to hear that one. And psh, the minority party, you can't do anything about it. Can't do a damn they thing. They can maybe try to introduce it as an amendment to another bill, but that's going to go down because yeah, you're you know what it is. <laughs> yeah. in the minority party, yeah. right? But you're raising it to signal to your allies, we're fighting for that's you. That's right. But, you know, so, you, like, I worked for a chair. So, former Senator Jim Metz, and he passed away in 2016, he chaired the Commerce Committee uh, from 13 to 16. You know, when he's in there, he's like, I don't hear this bill, I don't want to hear that bill, um... You know, and uh, you have two minutes to speak to the bill. Uh, I don't think, like, yeah, hey, we'll take a couple more amendments, and I think we're going to vote um, because that's the way he would hurry it along. Uh, you know, he didn't say this bill passes, this bill doesn't. If it comes up, that's you know the prerogative of the committee. But you, for the most part, you know, how you knew, it's gonna go. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, knew. yeah you know, know that. One of the things that I also want to ask you too. Um, now, I've heard people say that have you know the, the unwashed in politics we'll call it right the folks that have just never decided to kind of jump in and try and understand how the political process works people have this idea in my opinion that it's very difficult to be able to actually sit down and talk with your elected representative i've always advocated and said it's probably one of the easiest things you could do is like joe schmo from your constituency sends an email and says i would like to sit down and just you know share my mind on this issue with this um with this legislative uh, elective and nine out of ten times you'll be able to get them in there for r most ridiculous reasons and so i just wanted to ask like from your experience with all these years of being in la it's pretty easy for the average constituent to be able to voice their actual opinions to their elected representatives, right? If their member and their staff is responsive, <laughs> sure, sure, it relies sure. on that. Sure, but sure. Um, and by the way, Senator Kent's office is very responsive. Of course, okay, of course. Um, but uh, for, for real, yeah. I mean, all you gotta do is go to Google, type in "Who represents me," right, and what'll pop up the first website. It'll be the legislative website. Go there, type in your address. It will pull up who represents you. Everyone from your U.S. House reps, state house reps, all those people, and they'll have their phone number under, and then just call them, 
email them, request a meeting, because it's their job to represent you. Absolutely. And yeah, no, I, uh, one of the best people I thought that was good at that was, uh, um, was um, uh, damn, I just had a, a brain fart. Uh, Wellstone. Wellstone, uh, okay. Wellstone was really great with that. Um, Wellstone was um, incredibly hands-on. I told you I only worked for him for like two months before he died. And dude had me feeling like I was the CEO up in there. Like I was the HN I see around there, right? Sure. Yeah, 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 no. Yeah. He really was. I mean, dude made it his business to make sure that everyone that he come in contact with, that he knew, they knew he was sincere. And uh, I think that that was good politics. I want to ask you uh, – do you think OJ did it? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> um, if if you were to ask our mutual friend Bobby, <laughs> what did he say? What did he say? No, that OJ's in it. Oh, OJ's in. Uh -huh. I think so. No, no. Bobby's uh, an epic troll. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby's an epic no, man, troll. I've had these super deep conversations with him. I'm like, bro, you're crazy. I'm like, you're like one of the only white people I know that thinks that, that he is. OJ's he's holding it down. Well, you know, three, he's holding it. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it after because, well, you know, I, I, we'll talk about it afterwards. Um, but uh, I brought this up to be silly, but also to, do you think uh, what happened to George Floyd? Do you think that that was murder? Yes. Do you think that was murder? Um, well, I, I love the the way you said it. Um, you see, I, you know, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Why do you think it was murder, bro? Because he murdered him. I mean, it, 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 it's. I mean, I I, I know it's an obvious question, but I, I, I what so, I try to do is ask everyone that sits on at this mm -hmm. table and on that screen, you know, that right. very question. And it, you're amazed at the answers you get. Some hesitantly answer it. Some have said no. Um, and then, you know, of course, I, you know, start beating them over the head. And they're like, well, well, maybe. But, you know, I, I want to know because that's the topic. I mean, mm -hmm. that's topic du jour, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I especially want to hear from black and white folks to hear the difference. You, you hear some, like Bobby would probably say, no doubt, that was a lynching. That was murder, right? You had Honey Badger a couple of weeks ago say, yeah. you know, I'm sorry, what did he, did he say it was murder? He did. He did say it was murder. Yeah, okay. yeah. Have we had any, I think, oh, Lacey. Yeah, Lacey. Yeah, and, and like, like what? Oh, and then the other brother that was yeah. here, uh, uh, what's his name? Alexander. He, you know, he didn't say the. He, he did. Um, how many? What's the ratio of of a black legislative assistance down there? Because I know it's a hard job to get. You got to know. You know, that's like when my uncle say, "It ain't what you know, it's who you know." And so that's not a job. I mean, you can apply. Don't get me wrong. Let me just say this right. It is a job that's, you know, if, when they're available, it is online. They do list them online. You can find it. I think I've seen it on uh, uh, Zip Recruiter or something like that. So right. they, they, they do put them out there. It's, but it, it is a job that you kind of got to know someone to know someone. It, it's, it's best to know someone. Yeah. Right. I mean, and that, that's just, let like, me think of all the jobs I mean, that's, you guys ever got. That's, you know, that's true. Like, jobs, and especially in politics, though, for real, it's best yeah. to know someone. If you know someone. Relationships matter. Yes, absolutely. And I think, honestly, had John had been running for a second time, um, I think that at, he could have just yeah, said, might, you know, let's clout, let's get, yeah. yeah, you know. Or oh, I love, I, I told me she'd ran for Senate. Then no doubt he could have picked me. <laughs> you know, you <laughs> will never be in this trouble. Um, yep. The, you hired through the office. The senator is the only person that gets to make the how many How many black L.A.s are there? So I've been the only black man for a while. In fact, I, there was no other black man. Um, as far as the Republicans, I think the, they have a couple of black men. They do. Uh, uh, they do. Um, we have, I mean, because there's a lot of, there's been a lot of. So wait, 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 wait. And I, I am who I am. Republicans have more black L.A.s than Democrats. Black men. And more black men. We have. Uh, I'm saying as a whole. I, 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 I don't, a whole, I'm I not thinking of the sex. Of I'm color. saying. I'm just saying, um, how many blacks are there, period, on either Any side? Winner, uh, I think there's about, I think, three in the Republican caucus. Top in my head, I'd have to count, but I think about five in the Democrats. So about Where? Yeah. Democrats? Okay. Yeah. Democrats, thank God. So <laughs> we, that's eight total, sounds uh, maybe eight to ten? Approximately, yeah. Maybe ten, is that pushing it over? Yeah, you might be going a little high on that. Okay, so then let, let's say like this. Uh, I, black or minorities? So how many minorities, minorities are there? Yes, higher, let me say that better. Higher. Um, again, we just had some turnover. But okay. Probably 10 to 12 or something like that. So yeah. if, because that's, that's what I found out too when I was applying, uh, that there is high turnover um, for LAs. Yes. So, you know, you've been there. Obviously, you do a superb job because you wouldn't have been there this long. So how did you, how does, how do you prevent the turnover or how is that prevented? Because sometimes I know an LA that uh, was only there for 
one session. It's, it's a different generation, right? Oh, okay. So the generation previous before us is like you, you tend to go to one place and you're going to be at that place for a long time, right? But a lot of those long-term legislative assistants have been retiring out. Um, and you got newer, younger people coming in. And for a lot of them, it's a pit stop, right? So they're going to look mm-hmm. to be, go, first of all, go do something, you get more money. Yeah. <laughs> right. work, yeah. for, work for a public affairs company somewhere? Exactly. Go yeah. work for, well, I mean, I used, I've seen them go to public affairs, seen them decide to go back to law school, uh, business school, policy school, PhDs. I've seen them completely leave politics, right? It, it just kind of depends uh, whatever specifically they want to do, right? I mean, I've been there, you know, what, about eight years. So that you want to be a politician? I mean, I've thought about it. Um, Always beware of the person that tells you, man, I should be a politician. <laughs> I should be a politician. I, I was born and an angel told me I should yeah, run. I, but I, that was me, though. <laughs> I've I, always hated that. No, bro. That's but my biggest pet peeve. That was yeah. me, though. I thought it's that I was to born to be a politician. <laughs> it, it's best to have someone say, you know what? I, I think you would be a good... I think you'd be. You should run for elected office. Well, that Have happened. Other people see that in you. That happened, but I was like, no, I want to be a politician. Well, I met Jesse. Well, let me say this right. I was my Jesse school Ventura? Anderson Open. Is that what you said? Jesse Jackson. All right. The real <laughs> I'm Jesse. Just kidding. Uh, I met. Was at an event. Seen Jesse. Okay. And I thought the brother was looking right at me. He probably was looking over me, you know. But <laughs> I thought the brother was looking right at me, right. And then I had. I, I was. One of those fortunate students, I had like several black teachers, and they didn't play. I mean, they were they were black. I, Mr. Boone was married to a white lady, but he was black. Mr. Boone, Grady Boone, didn't play. So I was always the voice for the voiceless. I mean, I did city city, city council. I should. I did student council. Mm-hmm. I just was a rabble rouser, right? Mm-hmm. So watching my mom be a um uh um uh. What it, uh, gosh, union, union, um, union steward? Uh, what did it call Union steward, thank you, bro. A union steward and meeting with different people. And like I told you, there was no hate talk in my house because there was all type of people in my mom. She was a union steward. And so seeing my mom, talking about, we ain't having that shit. I was like, oh, I want to be like my mom. I want to sit at this table with these folks and talk about, we ain't having that shit. <laughs> so with my mom and Jesse, that was, I was one of those people that thought politics was for me. And then I get involved. And then I say, well, <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> I think I want to be behind the. I like being behind but the one scenes. One of the things I want to ask Isaac is, you know, what was for you? What was your path of why you wanted to kind of get into that that sphere? I, I know stay. that you recently graduated with your master's word um, through uh, Humphreys Public School of Yes, sir. Uh, uh, oh, pub, right up, bro! Congratulations, Humphreys School of Thank Public you. Policy. So that's major kudos to you, man. But uh, for what, real, what made you want to get involved, man? So you know. I remember watching my dad on Sundays yelling at the TV. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember Sunday that. shows. Yeah, and just like, you know. Yeah, like Charlie watch, Rose. Yeah, yeah <laughs> but, or the McLaughlin group. Yeah. 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 Um, but uh, it, it, so he had his own his own political, you know, bent. What do you think his dad was? Oh, he's Democrat. He's Democrat. But, okay. I mean, okay. He, he, he was a Democrat, but I mean, he was, yeah, he's something else. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, but um, and then you know my mom is a Democrat, so I mean they're they're all Democrats, oh. right? But the thing is, is is you know I, I just kind of had an interest in it. I went to undergrad school. Uh, I, I went to undergrad, um, and and I brought all that with me, right? So you know I'm 38. So when I was on public assistance, was you know and could really think about what was happening around. Guess what was one of the things that was coming up? The 96 welfare reform, mm. okay, right? And you know they black people were fearful when they were on that, what does this mean for us? Yep. Right. And regardless of what people think about the legislation is there, there was that concern. Right. And mm-hmm. every time you're going to overhaul something, that's a social benefit program. That's absolutely that concern is going to be there no matter what. Um, but I brought a lot of that with me. And then obviously I turned 18 and then nine 11 happened. I turned 18 June, 2001, nine 11 happened right there. Right. And so, you know, now the country's talking about war and, you know, I was interested, so I'm reading the newspaper. I actually took two years off from 18 to 20. I didn't go to undergrad. Um, and then the, you know, the invasion kicked off in 03. So I went back to school, and I, I was not a proponent of the, of the Iraq war. Neither uh, was I. I, I just I, I didn't think it was smart foreign policy. Agreed with Trump. Oh, yeah. Trump. Hey. Which Trump? With the with the real hey, Trump, no, please hey, stand up. Hey, Trump Trump was against the invasion. He, he, yeah, right. It, it, it. Until he got in the office. No, he, and he still was like, we need to end this. No, he, oh, oh, but now he's criticizing uh, President Biden. 
No, he that's Afghanistan. Yeah. No, I'm just you, you. You can't pick. You can't pick and choose. I mean, well, we've both been the, two, you, two we've occupied things. one for over twenty years, and which, then you're gonna criticize the guy. Which, which you were gonna do the same damn thing to get out of Iraq. But then you can't criticize the guy who does it. No, no, he's criticizing the way that he's doing it from a position of weakness, and plus we gotta remember he's gonna do it the same friggin' way. No. Yes, he was. No, here's what he's criticizing. So so Trump had this timeline, right? And Biden is basically following the timeline. And what would be wrong with that? he's taking the credit for it. Oh, so he Trump is not. He's not Trump. like Trump. He doesn't beat his chest. Trump being Trump is like, hey, that's my timeline that you're taking over, and you're weak and you're Trump. And Trump being Trump. But but sorry, man. Let's jump in. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. Especially so when it comes after, to Trump. After Iraq happens and invasion. Right. So, yeah. I mean, and paying attention to all that, you know, it, you know, stimulated my intellectual curiosity. So, you know, I went to undergrad. And the thing is, is that I I spent some time there because I got a double major. I graduated in 09, Damn, and there was nothing in 2009. There was mm. nothing in the job market in 2009. So I actually went and did industrial flooring. Oh, wow. Industrial flooring. Double industrial major. Industrial flooring. Double major, political science, history, and I'm hauling concrete for about $13 an hour Ooh. in 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 production facilities, right? But that's what so I it was. It was do. paying. That's right. Do. My yep. parents didn't have no money, so there wasn't no let's go home and let's once you go take a backpack trip to Europe and figure yourself out, right? <laughs> yeah. there, there was none of that. It was it was this is what you have to do because you want to eat, which in a way is good because it oh, was, a teacher's thing. Well, I found out I found out how people really who don't look like me, who are from small towns, people who graduated, 29 people in their class, you know, completely different than me, all white rural dudes, you know, how they think. Times, absolutely, there was friction. Other times, they absolutely got along, mm -hmm. right? So it was actually a very good experience for me. But then I volunteered. You had to whoop nobody's ass, did you? Uh, no. Okay. He, he ain't going to say so anyway. He's a you're big boy. I mean, well, I mean you, you probably weren't well, always this big, this though. Man. Actually, back then I was bigger because now I'm about five <laughs> surgeries later. <laughs> Damn, you were bigger. I was, but, you know. We'll talk about that later. You, yeah. Were you a boxer? <laughs> uh, back then I didn't do it. Like, I had done martial arts. Now I do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Brazilian boxing. what? Jiu-Jitsu. That ain't the wax thing, is it? What? Oh, no, no, okay. Yeah, that's uh, the Mr. Me. Oh. Stuff. He no, no, he's talking about it. a Brazilian wax. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, oh, yeah, no, oh. no. No, you're, no. you're j oh, I'm sorry. Jiu-jitsu. Oh, the, okay. Yeah. No, do you still do it now? You practice it now? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. I still do it. So I, um, I brought my gun, so try me, okay? <laughs> To get to that gun. Uh, that's true. That's true. Um, I run. No, I can't run now, though. Although I can't run now. Hey, look, because we, we got about Absolutely. eight minutes with you here. Um, do you think that? Um, do, uh, I gotta, uh, for you, do you see? Uh, how do you see um, us? I gotta. I gotta. I gotta watch how I ask the question, right? Because you work there. Uh, <laughs> Are there, do you, <laughs> do you ask it, I'll navigate it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me just say this. Is there, will you, do you think there's going to be a time where there, uh, where I'm not asking the question of how many black legislative assistants there are? Um, uh, because I, 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 I think that that's, that's terrible that I had to even ask the question. That should be a job where, Folks of that want to ex have a political experience because that's a that's the best political experience you can have is clerking or being a legislative assistant for someone, whether they're popular or not. That experience is is you know, dude. Listen to how you talk. Listen to the way you talk and the way that you. <laughs> no, and, and, and I love politics, but I'm saying I can tell the difference in me and you, right? You know, I've been I'm involved. You're a sausage maker. You know what I'm saying? In this, well, you, you're well, part of the sausage, sausage maker. Makers. Exactly. Yeah. That, let me say that right. Thank you. So that is the difference. And and I do somewhat, but you're more deep in depth. You know, you're you're dirty, you know. <laughs> you know? Let me say that right. You don't you get dirty, I should say. So do you think there will be a time where we're not asking the question of how many black legislative assistants there are? I mean, you would have to is that is it some sort of threshold that you have to reach for X amount of, of people of color working in the caucus? I think it's something that you would always want to ask yourself. And the reason you would is to make, to do your best to make sure that these careers are, are open to a wide variety of people. Right. Um, and I, I think that's entirely fair. And you want that represented ac across the gambit, right? It's, 
you want people who have, you know, ide- ideological diversity, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. You don't want everyone in there that agrees that absolutely this is the right way to go, right? Because sure. you know what happens is that you get groupthink and then you get unquestioned assumptions mm-hmm. about how the world works. And when that happens, those unquestioned assumptions can run rampant and then you get some very horrible policy. So you need that sort of uh, a, that intellectual sparring and it's absolutely necessary. And absolutely. I'm not going to, re- I won't reveal And healthy. Happened. It is healthy. I won't reveal what happens in caucus, but they're absolutely having those debates. Sure. Uh, so, okay, you say you won't reveal the why is it, it uh, confidentiality? It, confidentiality. Right. What they say there. No, so no, no. I know that, but I'm saying is. like, it's, it's, is is the process ugly? Is there or oh, sometimes uh, they get heated? Okay. Oh yeah, sometimes they get heated. Some, Wait a minute. You know, not, sometimes they kick us out because we're gonna turn the yeah. mics off. No one's listening. <laughs> is there any cat fights? No one's listening. No. Uh, yeah, um, your Minnesota state legislators are professional. At all I know, <laughs> passive aggressive ass people. Um, <laughs> those, those folks. I, I'm, I'm. Let me just say, my first time meeting you, bro. Uh, I, I'm really glad that you're there. Now I can say I know someone there that um, not only is helping uh, a Senator Kent fight and do the do the right thing, but I'm proud of you, bro. The, the hard work, where you come from, listening to you. And how you make hard work pay off for you, bro. And so I'm, I'm extremely proud of that and very happy that you're there. So k- make sure you keep up the good work. And I hope that any legislative system, be it black or white, is coming to you and asking your opinion and, and, and leaning on you because you, you're very seasoned right now. And uh, you should run for politics. You, you, you know, <laughs> would, would you? It's all about opportunity. If you don't run, yeah. would you be involved? Would you help? Like Senator Kent, she says, "Listen, I don't want you as my LA now. I need you as my uh, my comms person." Or uh, so we've got a we've got a bomb comms person oh. for the caucus, Shelly, and and she is she is absolutely a pro. She is amazing. So, so if you're but, watching, you owe him twenty bucks for shouting you out <laughs> for that, giving you that type of credit. No, but she she she's bomb. Like I I I love the staff that we have. Our our chief of staff is. Amazing. I love you being senior. Today. Do you have any? I mean, do you have a little position? So, I mean, I'm the legislative assistant for Senator Kent. So if you look on paper, it just says legislative assistant. Right. But I think people are, people treat me as a, uh, a proxy for her office yeah, when extension. she when she's not there, an extension of her office. Um, but, you know, it I, you know, working with Senator Kent, you know, and the, and the previous members I've worked for, I worked for Jim Metzen, I worked for Dan Schoen and every single one of them, um, especially the last two. Uh, have really encouraged me to uh, grow intellectually. They encouraged me to go back to school. They asked me my questions. You know, I can talk to Senator Kent, and I can be very candid with her about really? what I think about things. And you know what? She, she'll sit there, and she'll she'll say, I don't agree with you this. I don't agree with you that. Now, she's she's the boss lady. Okay. So when she makes a decision, that's how it goes. Yeah. And if she if I say, hey, I disagree, she's like, well, we're going to do it this way, and thank you for your, your, your input. I considered it. We're doing it this way. It's time to shut up and execute. <laughs> yes, well, she's she, the boss. She's the boss. Yeah, right. Yeah, and yeah. I accept that. Well, yeah. No, I mean, bro, and that's what I told them doing the interview. You know, it was like, no, I know how to check my ego at the door. No matter what I do, yeah. when I come into that office, I'm clerk. Or I keep saying clerking, but I, can I say yeah. clerking? Damn, clerk, I want to say clerking. Keep, whatever, I'm yeah. clerking for a senator or or a legislator or, or a rep, such Take and such. Whatever, yeah. So no, my own political ideology, all that is. Aside, I'm clerking for this particular person. I don't think they believe me, which is why I didn't hire me. You know, it's like, no, that's not that. No, because one of them said, oh, I've seen your podcast. I'm like, oh, oh shit. No. Oh, no. <laughs> Tell me about it. I can't think of her now. Is that what you said in the interview, too? Well, I didn't say it. Well, she didn't hear me. Oh, shit, because I hit the mute. But I'm thinking, oh, shit. You know, right? right? Like, OK, which one did you see? <laughs> right. And uh, but no, she uh, enjoyed it. And and and. Uh, I was like, oh, okay. But I think that, no, you're a great extension of Senator Kent. And so um, I hope that she realizes that too because you represent her well. And and, and, and that's a testament to um, her because she, she didn't pick you. Because L.A. She did pick me. She did pick you. How did she pick you? Was that different back in 13 than they do it now? Well, so because no, he, you've only been with Kent since you said like 2017, 2018, something like that. So I worked for Senator Jim Metzen from 13 to 16. And he passed away. Then I worked for Senator Schoen from about 17 to 18. Then he resigned. Mm -hmm. Uh, Then I worked for Senator Kent since then. Right. And in each one of those, I had to apply for the job. And she's so she selected me. So you. So again. So uh, let's say she runs uh, for U.S. Senate. And then, so how do what do you what do you love to do? So the thing is, Senator Kent, she's she's you know a good legislator to work for is someone that's respectful of the things that it is you want right so if she said hey isaac 
I want, I'm going to run for this and I want you to help me. Um, and I would strongly consider it because I want to be supportive of her. There's also career opportunities in it for me. Right. Because, you know, you have to think about yourself. Just, yeah. Um, you know, and I, I think she'd be amazing in the U.S. Senate. So if she actually did. I don't she doesn't want it. But if she <laughs> actually did, uh, you know, she's happy where she's at. But I mean, as a, I mean, do you have to apply for another clerk in position? Do you have to? So that's what I'm saying. What's the process? Because if I, she it'd does, be, it'd be a different. It'd what are you left to do? Because now you're now you're dealing with the U.S. Senate. No, yeah, no, no, no. I don't mean no, no, no. I'm saying here. If oh, she, saying she's running, and you're 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 here still uh, as an LA. Mm -hmm. Do you have to apply, reapply? I would have to reapply uh, for for another for. Another so Senator position. Nelson is available. You got to reapply for. <laughs> To well, work Senator Carla Nelson's Republican. So <laughs> well, I know, and, and, and I met her though. <laughs> and we walked down the hall, and I said, "Hey, sister," because you know she's not that yeah, tall; yeah, she's yeah. by my height. So I said, and "I said that's my sister's name too." So and it really is. So I was like, "I think we're kinfolk." You got any black brothers? <laughs> you don't know about? Um, you know, Nelson is one of the commonest white you names. You know, I, I wanted, I wanted to say too. She's I, I want um, <laughs> to. I'll take you afterwards. <laughs> I wanted to thank you for coming on the show. Um, I, I know that. Uh, Man, your your breadth and depth of, yes. of different policies um, are at a place that we haven't even touched. Uh, I know that you've had articles published. Have you? Um, he, I know that you deal um, like you have a, a big focus on international, love the international, uh, international policy. You do, yeah. and so it'd be great to have you back on the show. Absolutely, I, I think um, you know we we do try and, and focus a lot on Minnesota, Minneapolis, and, and keep it local. But I definitely think there's some some interesting things internationally that I would love to hear yeah. your perspective and your side on, and, and that'd be cool too. But you're, I love to. you're you're welcome to come back on the show, and, and we hope we'll have you back, man. Yeah. And then you're a Democrat, so what the hell? Don't listen to him. Listen to me dude absolutely you can come back but no it's, it's kind words thank you no, you know, no. I, I greatly enjoyed myself great you know good if you guys would be so gracious to have me back I'd absolutely to. especially yeah, since good. he told me you didn't tell me about that you know I would, i'm sitting there babbling this, this, he's like the uh what, what do they call it he's like the 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 millennium man or whatever whatever they call it, like the he's got it all man no that's no he, you could tell though no you could tell brother you are a, 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 a broad brother and i got mad respect for that just an hour we spent here um, my respect for your intellect. You're you're an incredibly smart dude, and I and I hate to be told that because you know black men we don't need to be told that because we are. But I, I'm trying to uh, make sure the folks know that this is a you're a brilliant brother that um, is working his ass off down there. And keep up the good work, bro. And absolutely come back so we can talk deeper in depth politics. Now I can. When you come back now, I feel comfortable. I can say different things, yeah, and, yeah, you know, because yeah, yeah. I didn't want to get you in any trouble. Because you know, you know, you <laughs> represent you, and you weren't we weren't here to bring you to. Represent um, Senator Kent or anybody else, but man, keep up the good work, bro, and make sure you come back. I will. Thank you. Yeah, thank man. you both. Thank you. I Thanks, appreciate man. it. Thank you. We have great. We produce some but great guests on this show. Yeah, no, it was it was a good show. I mean, uh, you know, we we're gonna have next week a very um, a very controversial, controversial guest. <laughs> to so, say the least. Um, this this was a great show. We were able to talk about a lot of things. Um, but next week, yeah, we're gonna have uh, probably a little bit more controversy. But uh, yeah. Oh, oh that Sparks. So please make sure you're here on time, 8.05, and start your watch party because there's going to be Sparks flying when next week's guests come in between myself and he. Uh, oh, please watch it. Please watch it. And hey, get your ass Terrell Owens, uh, excuse me, Terrell Owens would say, get your popcorn ready, damn it. Get your popcorn ready. Get your popcorn ready. I'm Jabari Nelson. I'm AK Kamara. I'm the smart one. All right. Okay. I'm, I'm the smarter, slightly more handsome one. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs>